on, so keep racing. I promise that the Lord is good, you will taste it. Just keep on pushing till the day that you face it. And we will build to embrace it. Let's pray. Now, Heavenly Father, we just come before your holy throne in the name of Jesus, God, and we thank you for this day, Lord. Uh, we thank you for your mercy and your grace, God, upon our life. Uh, we thank you for Golgotha Hill. Uh, we thank you for the cross of Calvary, God. Uh, we thank you for the blood that was shed, Father God. Yes, Father God. For the forgiveness of our sins, God, the salvation of our soul. Thank we thank you for the tomb, God, that today lies empty and the cross lies bare. We thank you for the ascension, Lord. And we thank you that as we sit here today, as we sit here right now, Father God, we are actively waiting for your return. Yes. Lord Jesus, I pray that your word comes alive to us every time that we read it, God. Yes. God, do not let flesh hinder what you want to speak to your children, what you want to speak to your sons, God. Do not let flesh hinder any of that, Father God. But ultimately, Father God, let your will be done, Father God, that the word that you have placed before us today would be supplemented to us in every fashion, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would remove every lofty opinion that exalts itself above your knowledge. I pray that you would remove any hindrance, God, that any distraction that would keep us from growing and understanding your word better, Father God. But most of all, God, I pray that you help us, God. Yes. God, we are in desperate need of your help. Yes. From the best of us yes. to the worst, yes. we are in desperate need. I am in desperate need of your help, God. I cannot do this on my own. I can't. I've tried and I failed miserably, Lord, and I need you in my life. I need you to help me read this word. I need you to help me clear my mind that I may hear you and you alone, God. Yes. yes. And I ask the same for my brothers, God. So we lift up your holy name. We yes. glorify you. In the mighty name of King Jesus, we pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, praise the Lord. <sighs> Watching us live on Facebook, I want to encourage you, man, share this with your neighbor, and let's get it in. Daniel chapter 8, verse 27, the word of God reads like this, and I, Daniel, was overcome and lay sick for some days, all right? Now, check this out. You'll be like, Brother George, what's so powerful about that scripture? Well, you got to understand what's going on here, Carlos, right? Like, we know. <laughs> Daniel has just received the prophetic vision of the end times. He has seen four kingdoms come and go. And the final kingdom was the worst of them all. The final kingdom was so terrifying that it was difficult for him to even explain it. The vision that he received from God was so, so thick, was so, so heavy that he lay sick in his bed for days on end. Amen. And look what Daniel does. The word of God says, then I arose and went about the king's business. But I was appalled by the vision and did not understand. My brothers and sisters, the word of God teaches us here that when Daniel received this prophetic vision from the Lord, that did not hinder him. It did not keep him from doing what he needed to do. The word of God makes it extremely, extremely clear, my brothers and my sisters, that once Daniel received this vision from God, though he was sick, though he it laid heavy on his heart, afterwards he got up and went about his father's business. Now, why do I start there? I started here last week. Why do I start there? Because sometimes we can get so caught up, so caught up <laughs> about something that's going to take place 20, 30, 40 years from now that we forget about the plan of God now, about what God is doing now. Now, am I saying that you shouldn't take what God shows you about the future and put it into action? No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that you got to be about your father's business. There's souls to be saved now. There's children to be discipled now. There's wives that need to be led now. Amen. There's work that needs to be done now. Let me tell you something. If we don't do the work now, my brothers and sisters, false teaching, right? False teaching, heresy will dominate the ear of the Christian. Amen. And when the time comes, when the final days come, the word of God says that even the elect will be fooled. So it is very, very important that you do not get so caught up in this 
far off future. And when I say far off, that could easily mean 20 years, 10 years, five years, that you don't do the work now. See, Daniel did it. Daniel received the revelation from God that was telling him what was going to happen, not only at his doorstep, but what's going to happen five years from there, 10 years from there, 200 years from there, 400 years from there. And Daniel went about his business. Amen. Now, what does that look like? The brothers may be asking, okay, brother George, God showed me a revelation. God showed me something in his word. God showed me vision for my life. God showed me that this was going to happen, that A was going to happen. How do I put it into action now? How can I keep what God showed me about the future on the forefront of my life in order for me to not miss it, but at the same time remain active in my pursuit of God now, in my pursuit of holiness now, in my pursuit of biblical growth now? How do I train up my children in, in, in the ways of the Lord when I know that the end is coming, right? How do I teach my wife and my children what is sound and what is true when everything that's flowing through the media, everything that's flowing in modern day evangelism and Western evangelicalism is the contrary of what true biblical belief is? How do I do this? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The word of God says in Daniel chapter 9, all the way to Daniel uh, chapter 9, 1 through 19, Daniel fasted, Daniel prayed, Daniel asked for the forgiveness, not only of his sins, but of the sins of the nation, but of the sins of his brothers, the sins of his sisters. Amen. You want to know how you can put this into action today and now pray, pray, be about your father's business. When, when your brothers and sisters are too prideful and arrogant to repent and ask God for forgiveness, you intercede for them. You mm -hmm. intercede for them that God will come and remove the scale off their eyes. Mm -hmm. Amen. You be the light of the world to them. Remember, we, we learned this on Monday. The word of God says in John chapter one that Jesus is the light of the world and the light and the darkness did not overcome it. Right. Did not overcome it. Then we see further in the scripture, and actually, I think it's in Matthew, it says that you are the light of the world. Amen. So when Jesus came and he was the light of the world and the darkness did not overcome it, the darkness cannot comprehend it. And then he died, resurrected, ascended into heaven and then sent you his Holy Spirit. Now you are the light of the world. Remember, even the smallest candle, the smallest candle will light up an entire room. The smallest candle will light up an entire room. Amen. So when you receive this prophetic knowledge from God, prophetic vision from God, maybe it's not about the end of the world, Brother George. Maybe it's just about the ministry that I'm supposed to pursue. Maybe it's about your gifting and your calling and what you're supposed to do for the kingdom of God. And God showed you, hey, two years from now, you're going to be doing this. But right now, I need you to focus. What do you do? You pray, you fast, you repent, you ask God to cleanse you. Cleanse your heart. Remove anything that is wicked, God. Remove anything. Because remember, guys, and then I'm going to say this out, out loud, and, and I'll be the first one to admit it. Every day, I got to ask God to remove junk out of my life. Every day, bro. Every day. If we utilize the standard of Jesus Christ to measure your walk, remember, Jesus elevated the standard of the law. And he said, it's not only about action, but it's about thought. It's not only about thought, but it's about word. So in one shape or form, whether it's action, word, or thought, we all have something that we need to ask God to continuously remove from our heart. Cleanse me, O oh Lord. Search me, O oh Lord. Pray, fast, seek the Lord, and ask him to lead you into this place where you will ultimately be or, or, or need, where you need to be to execute the vision that God has given you. See, Daniel did that. He prayed, he fast, right? Now check this out. Um, and and we're, 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 I'm just going to backtrack real quick. But Daniel chapter nine, verse three, the word of God says, then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord, my God, and made confession saying, oh Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and love those who keep his commandments. 
We have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled. Turn aside from your commandments and rules. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princesses, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. To you, O Lord, belongs righteousness, but to us, open shame. Bro, Daniel no one knew how to pray. Like, Daniel was messing around. Daniel was made, all right, come on. How many of us can easily go in and say, God, so forgive me. I did this. I did that. I did this. I did that. Or how many of us could actually go into prayer and be the opposite and be like, they did this. They did that. They did this. But to be able to go into prayer and say, God, unto you belongs mercy and righteousness, but unto us open shame. That is Daniel saying, God, you are good. We're not. We're the ones that need forgiveness, God. So please forgive us. Right? Mm -hmm. Please forgive us. So he prays, he prays, but today we are specifically in Daniel chapter nine, verse 20, amen, verse 20, and we're going to go through verse 23. After Daniel prays, he actually gets an answer from the angel Gabriel, amen, from the, an from the angel Gabriel. But before he gets that answer from, from the angel Gabriel, Carlos, if you don't mind, bro, can you read Daniel chapter 9, uh, verse 18 and 19, bro, please? 18 and 19, all right. I'm reading out of the NLT, my brothers. Amen. All right. Oh, my God. Lean down and listen to me. Hmm. Open your eyes and see our despair. See how your city, the city that bears your name, lies in ruins. We make this plea, not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy, mm -hmm. man. Oh Lord, hear, oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, listen and act. For your own sake, do not delay. Oh my God, for your people in your city, bear your name, man. Man, let me tell you something, my brothers. Again, all right, take this into consideration. As we're reading the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. we all know this, right? We know we know that Daniel was a man of God, mm -hmm. faithful, that he was uncompromised, right? He did not compromise, right? This dude was a man of God, bro, man of God. Paul Washer has a saying, and he says this. Paul Washer says, uh, there's no mighty man of God, only weak men of God who serve a mighty, mighty God. And, and I hear him. I, I get mm -hmm. it. I understand it. But we have these giants in the faith, amen? We have these people in the faith that we can look up to. And when we look up to them and call them mighty, we're not calling them mighty because of their strength or because of their nobility or because of their integrity, but because of what God did for them, amen? Because of their obedience, because of their compassion, their love, because God chose them. Like, let me tell you something. You know why I call Paul the mighty man? Because Paul was able to admit that he was weak and nothing without God. Amen. Paul made it clear. It is in my weakness that his strength is perfected. To me, that's mighty. Right? To me, that's mighty, bro. To me, I'm like, wow, bro. That's, that's, that's true humility to say, man, you know what, bro? I can't do anything without Jesus Christ, bro. I can't. A lot of people talk about it. A lot of people talk about it. But they surely do act without Jesus Christ on a day-to-day -day basis. Amen. We can all talk about it, but but what about when it's time to shut up? What about when it's actually time to speak? What about when it's time to, to have some self-control? Like, it takes a lot of spiritual maturity, bro, to tell yourself no and tell God, yes. It really does. It really does, bro. Because the flesh will drive you and drive you and drive you. And if you are not walking in the spirit, bro, if you are not walking in the spirit, it would be extremely difficult for you, for me, to be able to be obedient to the things of God because the flesh can be very, very dominating. And we see this in Romans chapter 7, right? We see Paul talking about that he knows that the law is good. He says, even though I know that the law is good, um, I do the things that I know that I'm not supposed to, but I know that it is not I does it, but it is a sin living in me. Therefore, I come into agreement with the law that the law is holy and pure, right? 
So there's just battle. There's just the spiritual battle, right? But when I see these men of God admitting to their weaknesses, when I see people like Daniel say unto us, open shame, but unto you belongs righteousness. When I see people like Daniel saying, God, forgive us for our sin, it shows me a, a strength about this man of God that I, I pray that one day I have, right? That, that one day you can have. Us as men in the church, men in the body of Christ can come to the conclusion that it's not about us. It's about God, right? It's about him. It's about his glory. It's about his purpose. It's about him, right? Now, I wanted to start with this scripture right here, Carlos, because look what he says, bro. Look what he says. Oh, my God, incline your ear and hear your eyes and see our despair and the city that is called by your name. Daniel is saying, it's not about us, God. Look, yes, we're in captivity. We're in slavery right now. I really, really need your help right now, God. But it's not about us. It's about you, oh Lord. Why? Because we are children that are called by your name. When people look at us, they say, oh, there go the children of God. There goes Israel, right? The one in whom God delivered from the Egyptians. The God who split the sea. The God who brought the seven plagues uh, or the ten plagues. I'm sorry, whatever, whatever amount of plagues it is. That's them, right? So Daniel was saying, we don't want to shame your name, God. So because of your holy name, please respond. Because of who you are, please respond. Verse 19. Oh, Lord, hear. Oh, Lord, forgive. Oh, Lord, pay attention and act. Delay not for your own sake. For your own sake. You know what Daniel is saying? Daniel is saying, God, we act your behalf we benefit from it god when you glorify yourself god we benefit from it do you know that god can exalt himself there you go. over and over and over again and you reap the benefits of it if brother george does that you know what that's called pride self-centeredness Right. If, I, if it's always about me, always about I, always about me, you don't benefit from that. But if God does it, it benefits you. It benefits the world. Let me tell you something, men of God. Why did God save you? Why did he save you? Let me challenge your way of thinking. I told this to my brother a long time ago, and he, he got mad at me. And eventually he, 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 he realized what I was talking about. <clears throat> But why did God save you? Well, he saved me because he loved me. I said, yeah, well, he, he did love you. But why did he save you? Oh, because he didn't want me to be a drug addict anymore. Okay, that's cool. But why did he save you? You know why God saved you? That he would be glorified. That's why he saved you. The fact that he loved you is extra. The fact that you don't have to be a drug addict anymore is extra. The fact that your children get their father back, that's extra. But God does what he does for the sake of his glory. For the sake of his glory. John Piper has a really good message on this. Um, it's called Christian Hedonism. Christian Hedonism. And I want to encourage you to check it out when you're free. But what Christian Hedonism teaches is that God is most glorified. When you are most satisfied in him. Amen. When you are, man, God, I love you. I praise you. I worship you. I adore you. God is glorified in that. Amen. I'm not a drug addict anymore. God is glorified <clears throat> in that. I don't beat my kids anymore. God is glorified in that. It's all about the glory of God, my brothers. Amen. You may say that that's kind of selfish, brother. Well, who else do you know can take the glory for everything that he does and you benefit from it? Almighty. Only God can do that, my brothers. Mm -hmm. Only God can do that. Mm -hmm. And it, it, bro, go to Ephesians. 
Go to Galatians over and over. He says, for the sake of his glory, for the sake of my glory, for the sake of his glory, that you may be glorified, that you, everything is for his glory. And that's a beautiful thing. Bro, you get to partake in the glory of God. That's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. All right. So this is the posture of Daniel as he's praying. Amen. So a few things. And if you're taking notes, remember this. When Daniel prayed, first he said, God, you're holy, you're mighty, you're righteous. Some of us need a formula to pray. So here you go, right? <laughs> some, of us, some of us say, like, brother, well, how, how, how do I pray? Or how do I start my prayer? Or what do you think? Now, I, I know most of us know how to pray, right? But for anybody out there that, that doesn't know how to pray, okay, start off with number one, glorifying God. God, you're holy. God, you're mighty. God, you're worthy. Start with adoration. When we're praying, we start with adoration, right? Adoring God. For you are worthy, God. I praise you. I'm thankful. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Starts there. Number two, confession. Confession. Begin with where you are. Where's your heart at? As you come to the throne of God, where is your heart at? Because Daniel comes and he prays before God. He starts off. Alert from system UI server. Low battery. He starts off with adoration and then he begins with confession he starts saying god I'm, we're in desperate need we didn't listen um we've been rebellious yada 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 and he goes into that then he goes back into the needs right the needs he starts asking god and telling him hey god be merciful be kind but not because we deserve it but because of your holy name right so we this is a good heart posture to have when we hit the throne room, right? When you come to pray. Now look at the response of heaven. Look at the response of God when Daniel prays, right? Um, Brother Carlos, go ahead, or uh, bro, uh, Ephraim, if you don't mind, bro, Ephraim, uh, if you can read, go ahead and read Daniel chapter 9. Read 20 through 23, bro. Go ahead and read those three verses, and then we'll come back and we'll break it down. And you're on mute, bro, so make sure you're on mute. <clears throat> Again, we're in Daniel chapter 9, and we're going to do verse 20, 21, 22, and 23. You got it, Ephraim? Yeah, I'm in Daniel chapter 9. You said 20? Yeah, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Hold on a minute. 9, 20. 20, 22, 23, okay. Okay, so I'm reading from this Bible is the ESV. Amen. ESV Bible, and the Word of God reads as this, on Daniel chapter 9, 20. While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my plea before the Lord my God for the, whole, for the holy hill of my, my God, while I was speaking in prayer, the man, Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the first, came to me in swift flight. At the time of evening sacrifice, he made me understand, speaking with me, saying, Oh, Daniel, I have now come out to give you insight and understanding. At the beginning of your pleads for mercy, a word went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly loved. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. Amen. 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 While I was speaking and praying, my brothers, it is very important that we understand the response of God to the posture of Daniel's heart when he prayed, 
right? Remember that the Bible is very specific when it tells us certain things. Right here, it says that while he was speaking and while he was praying, confessing the sin of himself and the sin of the people of Israel and presenting the plea before the, the Lord, our God, the, for the holy hill of God, the angel was sent. Amen. This teaches us right here that when Daniel was praying, God responded while the words were in his mouth. While God, that's like me and Brother Carlos were talking about it, right? And, and you know, he was going in for a job and he had a, a specific number in mind. And it's like, before he even spoke, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, the guy who was, who, who was uh, giving him the job told him, hey, this is what we're going to give you, right? This is teaching us that the posture of Daniel's heart brought forth a response from God in the here and in the now. Amen. In the here and in the now. Now, I know that we, when we talk about prayer, we always speak about what God may say. And most of the time, right, we always, we, and I've heard people say this, most of the time is yes. Um, a lot of the times is no. Sometimes it's maybe. God either responds with yes, no, I mean, not maybe, yes, no, or wait, right? Most of the time is wait, right? But here we see that as Daniel was praying and speaking, God sent a word to answer Daniel. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, and you don't have to turn there, but Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, Jesus said, your father knows things you have need of before you ask him. Right? So, Though Daniel was praying, Daniel was confessing, while he was doing this, God already knew the need. He already knew what was going through the heart of Daniel. He already knew. Why? Because Daniel presented his heart, a humble heart, a confessing heart, a repenting heart. He already had it exposed. Now, not that if you didn't come with that posture, God didn't know because God knows everything. But my, my point in, 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 in showing what happened with Daniel here is that that posture that we see in Daniel chapter 9 all the way through demanded a response from heaven. Daniel didn't demand a response, but because of how he came, because of his approach, God was quick to respond to Daniel. Amen. Now, this also shows us the benefit of fasting, right? Now, I don't want to I see the, the, the scripture. I don't want to put ourselves in the scripture, but I definitely will pull out of it. And, and what do we see in this? We see that Daniel was praying. He was fasting. Why? Because he was seeking to understand everything that he had just faced. From the dreams to the visions, like the all, his response was like, you know what? I'm going to pray and fast pray and fast. A lot of people will tell you, hey, pray fast for this or fast for that or fast for this or fast for that. I believe that we can fast, first of all, to hear the God, the heart of God more clear, right? To hear the heart of God more clear. We deny the flesh. We feed the spirit. But I also believe that there's purposeful fasting, right? You fast for a particular um, reason. Not for, not for the sake of of receiving a, a, a very specific answer, right? Like, oh, I'm going to pray so God can tell me yes. No, that's not the case. I, I'm going to fast so God can make this happen. No, that's not the case. Um, and a lot of people will, will utilize the scripture that Jesus speaks about the, the demon possessed, where he said, these only come out by prayer and fasting. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that there's times that we need to fast, that we may open up our spirit, open up our mind, open up our heart to what God is saying, whether it's yes, whether it's no. Maybe it's maybe. Maybe he's telling us to wait, whatever the case may be. What we see Daniel doing here, he is simply praying, fasting, repenting, all together and seeking God for a particular reason, right? that he may understand what he has, amen, what he's just heard. 
Now, let me let me let me ask you guys a question, right? How how do you see this, right? As, as just just for what it says, there's no wrong answer, there's no wrong response, but just for what it says, while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my plea before the Lord my God for the holy hill of God. While I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at first, came to me in swift flight at the time of the evening sacrifice. Anybody, has anybody got anything that they want to share regarding that? Maybe, maybe it was the time when you were praying, when you were fasting, and, and God brought some kind of understanding, a revelation. I don't know. Or maybe, how, how does this speak to you? Start with you, Carlos. Well, to me, that sounds like um like a <laughs> an answered prayer like in a in a like swift you know that swiftly means in a in a blink of an eye Amen. like saying you know like you know hey put what i was talking about earlier you know what i mean about you know before not that i was debating with the lord but i did pray about my pay raise before I get hired on, you know what I mean? But he was going to let me work there. He said, Carlos, if you want, you can work, you can be my per permanent temporary worker here. He said, you're the only permanent tem temporary worker I'm going to have here. So whenever wow. you're ready, whenever you're ready, come see me. And is that, you know, just let me know as like, you have a job here though, regardless. So I'm like, okay. Every, I was like, is that favor, Lord, or what's going on? You know what I mean? So anyways, <laughs> in the warehouse, everyone's speaking, and I didn't mean to get into that, but just real quick, in the warehouse, everybody's like, bro, the lead man, you know, he's cool with me. You know, he's real cool. He's like, bro, you know, you're the only uh, temporary, per you're, per you're the only permanent temp we have here. You know that, right? When everyone else can't come, you come. I was like, okay. So I kind of seen a little favor there, but anyways, the time came, and I was like, Okay, you know what I mean? I was waiting for something to go down. I was like, you know, I was paying child support. I was like, now I just want them to take it out of my, my check. You know what I mean? But I prayed about it, Lord. You know what I mean? You know my minimum. I ain't even going to say none. You know, regardless, you know, I, I mean, I'm doing my best to be obedient, you know, and you know, I know you're going to bless me regardless. So Amen. I went to him that day and I was like, sir, I was like, can we talk? I was like, can we talk about, you know, the job? I was like, the job's here. I was like, whenever you're ready. And then he said, okay, the pay, the pay is yours. And he gave me the number and I'm like, I stopped. And I was like, okay. You know what I mean? I didn't even, I didn't even have to. I'm like, all I did, it just took me back when I was praying. I was like, Lord. So when I walked out, I was just in awe. I was like, Lord, have you been talking to this man? You know, before I even said anything, <laughs> too, like that, too swift. Just what he said right there, swiftly, Amen. that quick. And I was like, man, and I, 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 I be quiet. I walked out. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And that, and that, amen. And that's a beautiful example, right? That's a beautiful example. It's like we, we think about, and I think the scripture is Philippians 413, it says that God will give you, I think it's Philippians 413. This is that God will give you um all that you need according to the riches, according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Right. Uh, that's um one. that's all I can do all things through Christ. Uh, okay, so it's um I forget what scripture it is, but there's a scripture um that tells us that God will give us everything that we need according to his riches in Christ Jesus, right? So the way I see it is this. We can ask God for a lot of things. We can. We can ask God for a lot of things. But there's a lot of things that we can ask for that come from a very selfish place. It, it just, it does. Mm -hmm. um, even, even when we are asking for a loved one or when we're asking for even say healing or like certain things, like God has a will and a purpose for everything that he does, for everything that he does. and Sometimes we have to make sure that we're in line with those riches in Christ Jesus, right? To God's will for our life. Now, does this mean that we don't pray? No, but what it means is that we should be tuned in to the to, to God's will for our life. 
Now, people would say things like, well, brother, how do we know what God's will is for our life? Well, the Bible tells us what the will of God is for our life. It tells us over and over and over again, this is the will of God. This is the will of God. This is the will of God that you shall flee sexual morality. This is the will of God that you shall be sanctified. This is the will of God. Like over and over again, we see Paul talking about what the will of God is for our life. So it's important that we understand that when we are asking for things in the will of God, like that, bro. And like, I mean, God does not hesitate. Why? Because it is his will. It is we're asking ahead of time. Like, and then too, and uh, Ephraim, I, I got you, bro. Give me one second. Sometimes God has something coming our way, right? He has something coming our way, but it is in a, in a very specific moment, in a very specific time, right? And we want, it, we want it to come faster. We want it to come faster. And that's when we get the, hold on, wait. <laughs> Right, hold on, wait. Like before, before you like wait, it's coming, it's coming. You have to wait. Sometimes we're asking for things that are not even in our lane. They're not even in our lane. God, I want a Ferrari. Man, you don't need no Ferrari, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need no Ferrari. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but now check this out. And again, Ephraim, I got you. Um. I was telling my daughter, right? My daughter goes to um, IOT. She goes to the International Leadership uh, Leadership Academy, and a, a lot of her friends are believers, right? And and some of her friends go to some really really big churches, right? Um, and and obviously we we go to a smaller church. Um, not that that there's any difference, right? Obviously, different different uh, scenarios, but we we serve God, right? But they they were talking about um poverty they were talking about prosperity they were talking about different things right and my daughter was telling one of her friends that she felt that it was important for a believer to hear a well-shaped view of god right not only the good but also the bad not that god is bad but that god not only is god love not only is god mercy not only is god kind but he's also just, holy, righteous, right? Um, and they were talking about it, right? So long story short, she tells me, well, I mean, dad, is there something wrong with prosperity, right? Prosperity within itself. And I was like, well, to say that God doesn't want to prosper us, I believe would be um, counterintuitive or it would, it would contradict the word because I believe God wants to prosper us. Now, how that prospering looks to every individual is different, right? Not everybody's going to roll out with, with, with the Ferrari, with the Lamborghini. Not everybody's going to have $1,500 suits. Like, not everybody's going to have that. And I gave her this example. And hear me out, guys. I used to be a drug addict. I used to be a drug addict, bro. Lived in the projects. I didn't own anything. Nothing, bro. Nothing. like. Oh, hold on. Holy Ghost. Um, I didn't own nothing, man. Nothing. In a few days, I'll be closing on my first home. Amen. I, one of my cars. <laughs> Everything that's in this house is paid off. It took years for me to get here. But that's all God. <laughs> that's all God, bro. Like, we have health insurance. Like, come on, somebody. Like, Bro, to me, that's like, that's good. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's God bringing me from one degree of glory to the next. Like, mm -hmm. but by the time my kids grow up, bro, they won't know what food stamps is. You see what I'm saying? They Enjoy won't. Bougie. <laughs> right? I mean, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not, nothing against any of that, bro, because I come from that. But, you know, when God, when God, whenever we needed food, and, and, and I was doing what I needed to do when I was going to church, doing everything that I needed to do. And God blessed us with food stamps. That was God's prospering in our life, bro. It was because I needed that help. I Whoa. needed food on my table, bro. Yeah. And I took that with a smile, bro. But you know what? I worked six days a week. I paid my bills. I, I didn't Ooh. ask for anything. That was God pros prospering in my life, you know? 
Hallelujah. Now, by the time, by the time we, we, my kids grow up, all they're going to know is private health insurance. All they're going to know is that mom and dad own a home that they're going to leave to us. That's all they're going to know. They're not going to know that past life because God has taken us from one level of glory to the next. Right. Come on. Come on. So I, I told my, my, my daughter, if, if that's not God prospering us, I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, does, does this mean that, 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 and, and I told her, I was like, I can't tell you that God doesn't want me to be broke. I said, cause I'm broke all the time. <laughs> <laughs> But why, why, why am I broke? Because I got bills to pay. I pay my bills. I work all week. Like, I don't care if I work all week long and end up with $10 in my pocket. As long as there's gas in the car, food in the table, light in the house, clothes on our back, and everybody got a smile, bro. I'm cool with that. But God definitely wants his children to move forward according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Amen. You rich in the spirit, bro. I'm sorry. I say you rich in the spirit, though. There you go. There you go. You know what I'm saying? And 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 so my daughter was was just she had a very and praise God, bro, that my daughter was able to show love and 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 truth at the same time, right? Like, hey, it's not just about all of this. God is well rounded. And another thing that my God said that my daughter said, she said, uh. She said, people need to know that God is, is a healer, right? People need to know that God is a healer. And they asked her, well, I mean, if people get sick, is that from God or is that from the devil? And my, my daughter's response was this, God allows things to happen. But in that sickness, he will be healer. Come on. He will be healer. He will be God, our healer. He will be. You know what I'm saying? And they'll know him as healer. If. God decides to bring someone into bring someone out of a sickness and not take them home, right? Because if they go home, the body, the word of God says to be away from the body is to be present from the Lord. Yes. So we know. But if God decides to bring someone into a place of healing, then they'll know him as Jehovah Rapha. Yes, but Jaira, when God brings them to that place, they'll know him. If they didn't know him as healer before, they'll know him as healer now. Come on. You know what I'm saying? So I say all that to say that we must understand the difference. You know, we must understand the difference. And when we pray according to God's will and his purpose, you'd be surprised how fast. Yeah. Go, go, go ahead, Ephraim. My bad, bro. <laughs> Went on a, a rant there. <laughs> you're, you're muted, bro. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I, I just want to say what you were saying um about prayer um and about this right here, Daniel, and and you was talking about you know the now and the God time. So I went through a lot of things that I was thinking about that. So wow, watch this um. <laughs> I had a teacher position and I resigned because I thought during that time I was going through some things to be a teacher to kids. You got to be 100%. So I had to go. So I resigned. But God said this, you know, and, and I tripped out on that. Like he said, you're going to come back. I'm going to bring you back. So I'm like, what? Anyway, so I, I found it impossible because I was going through things and I was going to do other things. But it's funny because then I went and got a job as a teacher again. But it wasn't my time because God was dealing with me. But I went and did it. I did it. You, I, you could do anything you want. So I did it. I, I applied for a job, got another job. It's that easy because I got the skills. But watch this. God told me to step down from that position. That was the hardest thing. So I did, right? But then when I felt I could go back, COVID happened. So I'm like thinking like, how is this? But I was going to drive trucks, but I prayed. And I remember what God told me. But guess what? Three years later, he did it. I didn't do it. Because what happened in the process was 
I applied, I was applying for a position. And then I started thinking about all the things that happened. So guess what I did? During applying for the position online, I put in my resume. I was going through the process. I stopped and I left it alone. I said, I'm just going to go drive trucks. Drive an 18-wheeler, get paid cash. That's it. But I never checked my email. A week later, I checked my email. I got an email from someone saying they would like to interview me for a teacher position because my resume came or application came across her. So I bugged out on that because I thought this. I said, wait a minute. I never finished the application. But then I thought about this. It was God's time, not my time. So no matter what I did or what I didn't do, God was going to do what he said he's going to do. And it was God's time, not my time. And I prayed. I prayed. And I even talked to my pastor. And my pastor said this, you got to forget about the past and you got to press on to what's ahead, forgetting those things in the past, like Paul said, and that's what you got to do. So if you're going to go drive a bus, drive trucks, that's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to do. You know, because I told him, I don't know about going back as a teacher. That's when everything happened. He goes, no, that you got to forget because God has things for you. You know what I'm saying? And then after he said that, I said, all right, God, whatever you want. But I never knew that happened until a week later I checked. And then I said, you know what? I'm not going to do that interview halfway. I'm going to do that interview as Ephraim, the teacher Ephraim. And God, you know my heart. So I'm going to go all out and interview for that position. And then guess what? If I don't get it, it was not your will. And then I could do what I want to do but it was God's time. And guess what? In the position, God's bringing me back to where I was before. And because I prayed, God, let your will be done. Not mine, but yours. But it wasn't my time back then. It was my time now when I got the other job. So sometimes God makes you wait. And sometimes the waiting's not easy. And sometimes you got to go from faith to faith. And sometimes he got to build you up. Because when he puts you back, there's no devil in hell that could take you out of what God gave you. <laughs> because like you said, it's for God's glory. It's not him who did it. It was God who did it. And God could do anything with us if we pray and we wait on him. Because he's dealing with the unseen in the spiritual world. Because guess what? We do not deal against flesh and blood but we deal with the principalities of the heavenly realm is the unseen, just like Daniel, you know, no. I got to calm down, but not your time because his time is the best time. His time is perfect. And guess Man. what? Now teaching is not easy. Kids got computers, get kids doing all this stuff. I'm learning everything new again, but guess what? I got this because God got my back. And that's Amen. what's up. Amen. Oh, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord, man. And that's 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 beautiful testimony, right? Beautiful testimony. Um, to be able to know, to be able to and just to hear. And, and guys, so this is Ephraim. Ephraim's from uh, Rochester, New York. Uh, one of the wildest cats that I know for Jesus, man. Um, but God, ooh, man. God moves, and, and, and that's beautiful. And, uh, we, we've been we're rocking with Ephraim, and we know his story. And, and we know Ephraim got some masters, a master's, right? A master's, right, bro? I have a master's degree, and I was doing my doctorate at Liberty University before everything said. Bang. And I Amen. came from a GD, a GD. God did it. Not me. Amen. God did it. And, and, and the reason the reason I bring up the master's is because it kind of, it shows you. It shows you, like, God's going to utilize what he has. God's going to use him and put him where God needs him to be. You know what I'm saying? And, and we've seen Ephraim go through this process, man. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, any, anybody else? Anybody else got anything they want to share on that particular scripture before we move forward to the next portion? Anybody? All right, cool. So check this out. <laughs> let me give y'all, let me give y'all uh, um, an insight 
of, of this type of prayer right here, right? When we see God responding to Daniel right off the bat, Isaiah, Isaiah speaks about this. Now, Isaiah is speaking about this, but he's speaking about the new heaven and the new Jerusalem, right? Um, but I, I believe it's, it's a good reference scripture. Um, I don't necessarily think it fits the context, but I think it gives us an idea, right? Once we're in the new heaven, once we're in the new earth, we are in God's total will. What it sounds like, what it looks like to ask of God and him respond, right? To ask of God and him respond. I believe that we get a taste of that while we're here. While we're always talking about the Lord's, the Lord's prayer. Um, uh, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So I know, I, I know for a fact that we get a taste, a taste. And I'm going to say a taste um, of, of what it's going to be like, right? What it's going to be like um, here on earth when our posture is fully submitted and surrendered to God. Um, and I believe Isaiah shows us a picture of this. And I, it's one scripture, but for the sake of context, I want to read Isaiah 65. So if y'all want to go to Isaiah 65. And we're going to go to verse 17. And we're going to read through uh, 17 through 25. And it's one specific scripture that I want to point out. But I want to read this whole thing. Uh, just for the sake of encouragement, for the sake of context. And also, I mean, we know that the book of Daniel definitely speaks about the end days. So why not, right? Why not read this, this whole thing so we can get an idea of what it's going to look like uh, when we go home, when we go to heaven. Um, Isaiah uh, <laughs> 65, verse 17, and I'm going to go ahead and read this for us. It says, for behold, I create new heavens and new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered. Or come into mind. That speaks volumes by itself, by the way, guys. <laughs> just I, I can do a whole Bible study on that, and we'll be here for another two hours just on that. Um, but I would encourage you guys to look into that. For behold, I created new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall I shall no more shall be heard in the sound of weeping and in the cry of distress. So that's one thing. We're not definitely not going to hear that, right? Pain will cease to exist. Distress, weeping, crying. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days. So we can forget about death in the new Jerusalem at that point in time. And then and, and when we're with with the Lord, as far as for the people that are there with God, um, or an old man who does not fill out his days, for the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat, right? So again, this I, I could do a whole Bible study on this, but we, we hear about the vanity of, of, of success, of, of um, materialistic success all throughout the Bible, right? It says, why? Why toil? Why toil? Why do this? Why do that? When at the end of the day, you're going to die and someone else is going to take what you own, right? So someone else is going to take what you have. Like, you know, we, we hear about that all through the Bible. So we hear, we see here that in the new Jerusalem, you're going to build and you're going to inhabit, right? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have what you have. You're going to keep what you have. They shall not build in another inhabit. They shall not plant another eat. For like the days of the trees shall be the days of my people, right? So again, we start seeing that in death, in our carnal death, uh, Charles Spurgeon said this. Charles Spurgeon said, God doesn't simply kill our humanity when we die, right? But he kills our mortality when we die right so we know that we're mortal we're mortal right now right like i'm mortal i i can go to sleep tonight and not wake up tomorrow if that's god's will right when we close our eyes to this world and open our eyes to the next one god is not simply taking away your humanity but it's taking away your mortality 
He's introducing you to immortality, right? Pastor Joe says this all the time. He says, there's two things that, that are going to exist forever, and that's God and people, right? God and people. Now, God has no beginning. We have a beginning. But according to what the Bible says, we will live in eternity with God. Amen. So for like the days of a tree shall be the days of my people and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Now, check this out. This is a scripture I want to point out to you guys. Before they call, I will answer. Come on, somebody. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. Like, come on, man. Before they call, I will answer. While they're speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Bro, that's a beautiful scripture. We're going to have to break that whole entire thing down right there one day. Um, before they call, I will answer before they are yet speaking, I will hear. That's that verbiage, that verbiage that's used right there. It's very, very similar to what we see here in Daniel, right? While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my plea before the Lord, my God, for the holy hill of my God. <clears throat> while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, the man Gabriel, right? whom I had seen in the vision at the first, came to me in swift flight at the time of the evening sacrifice. Amen. Right? So, in this portion of scripture, right, we see that Gabriel is mentioned. Now, if I'm correct, and I could be wrong, I could be wrong, guys, this is the first time that the angel is actually named. This is the first time that we hear that his name is Gabriel. It could be this one. I know it's in Daniel for sure. But this is the first time that we hear that the angel is called Gabriel. All right. Now, we can go all kind of directions here, my brothers. All right. Now, I, I, I'm not going to do that. Right. But I do want to point out a few observations. OK. When we read the scripture, when we're um, doing an expository teaching of the scripture, there's a there's what, what what I would call safe assumptions, right? But that's all they are. They're assumptions, right? They're assumptions. Um, I don't want to say, oh, well, this is what it's saying. That's what it's saying. They're safe assumptions. Now, <laughs> I'm very careful with my assumptions, guys, because I hate false teaching, right? Definitely hate false teaching. Um, I believe the Lord calls me to be an active contender for the faith. Um, I contend for what we believe. And I come against that which I don't don't believe the, the Bible teaches. Um, but this is a good this is a good opportunity right here to to to, to do a little bit of um, observation regarding angels. OK, regarding angels. Um, the word of God teaches us here. It says that uh, the angel Gabriel had the appearance of a man. Right. The appearance of a man. Um, this shows us. And we here actually see this all throughout the Bible that when angels present themselves to the men and women of God, they present themselves as men, like physical men, right? Now, whether they inhabit a, 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 a man or whether they can actually uh, present themselves in their own, um, you know, like, like the body and shape of a man, who knows? But we do know that for... Um, uh, what is that prophet's name? The one that was in the wine press hiding from the uh, Philistines. Uh, what is his name, bro? It's not Samson. That's Gideon. Gideon. So we know that when 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 the angels presented themselves to Gideon, Gideon made them some food, right? And they ate, or they consumed it with fire. I mean, again, we don't know. Uh, we also know that when the angels presented themselves to Lot, right, when Abraham and Lot was in Gomorrah, I mean Gomorrah, yes, yeah, Saddam and Gomorrah, the angels presented themselves to Lot as men, right, as men. And the wicked people of that city said, give us those men, 
that we may have relations with him, right? So again, we see that these angels took on the appearance of men, of, of flesh and blood. Now, whether they were flesh and blood, I don't know, right? But they look like. It. So right here, Daniel um, appears, uh, Gabriel appears to Daniel as a man, right? As a man. Um, this is the second time that Daniel sees him. It says, while I was speaking in prayer, the man, Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the first, came to me in swift flight at the time of the evening sacrifice. This is also one of the first times that we see that it is mentioned that angels fly. Right, like like uh, uh, brother Carlos was saying, that 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 swift response came because the angel was flying. Right, um, this is one of the few places that we're told in all the Bible that the angel was flying. Right, um, this is another observation. Check this out. Now, this may be contrary to to popular belief, and and I don't know. I mean, I think people have the right to. Uh, believe what they want to believe but we, we can definitely look into the scripture and, and get something that we should believe and stand on it but man gabriel was able to get to, to daniel right a safe assumption would be that there's no great distance there's no great distance between heaven and earth right there's no great distance now could it be that heaven is like thousands and thousands of miles away or could, could it be that heaven exists somewhere in a different realm and another, right? Uh, Paul called it the third heaven, right? He called it the third heaven. But one thing that we see here is that the angel was able to come. Boom. He heard him. He responded. And he was there, right? He was there. Now, I know since a child, we, we, we kind of see like, oh, uh, heaven is up here and, and, and hell is down here. Right. And the devil's like underneath the earth's crust. Um, but when we look at scripture, we see that the second heaven would, would most likely be the place of the demonic realm. Um, the third heaven is the place of, of, of God, his angels um, and earth is, is here. Right. So the first heaven would be our sky. The third heaven would be I mean, second heaven would be the solar system and the third heaven would be um heaven where god is and his angels now again all these are observations guys right you you can play with them as you want um different scholars different theologians have different beliefs about this um, but we see this gabriel came as a man and he was definitely flying now here's another thing that i want you to see he came at the time of the evening sacrifice i want you to look into that the evening sacrifice uh we know for a fact that the evening sacrifice was symbolic for the Jews because it was the time when Moses offered the Passover lamb, the evening sacrifice in Exodus 4, 6. We also know that it was during the evening sacrifice when Jesus was sacrificed, uh, uh, crucified. You find that in Matthew 27, uh, 45. Um, not only that, Daniel often seen the smoke of the evening sacrifice rising um, from the temple. Right. So the fact that his response came at the evening sacrifice, I believe, also is a very good thing to look into um, and to kind of look, look a little bit further into that and, and how symbolic it is that that evening sacrifice. Amen. Um, verse 22. He made me understand, speaking with me and saying, oh, Daniel, I have now come out to give you insight and understanding. At the beginning of your pleas for mercy, a word went out, and I have come to tell it to you, for you are greatly loved. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. My brothers, we have been talking about the posture of, of Daniel's heart. We've been talking about his way of prayer, his way of fasting. Right. His approach to this whole entire thing. And. Again, this goes back to what I was saying about mighty men of God. Right. Or just let, let's let's take out the mighty just men of God, men of God. No compromise, pursuing God, pursuing the work of God, his kingdom, his riches, his glory. All about you, Jesus. Right. 
we get this beautiful response from the angel when he speaks to Daniel. At the beginning of your pleas for mercy, a word went out, and I have come to tell it to you, for you are greatly loved. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. Like, we hear about the love of God all the time. Like, all the time, right? We hear about the love of God all the time. But it, when, we, when we get into the word of God and we see these direct comments from God, from the Holy Spirit, through an angel, whatever, to an individual and saying, we're here. I come to bring your response to your prayer because you are greatly loved. Men, that should speak to you. That should speak to you. It speaks to me. Right? It speaks to me. Now, is Daniel greatly loved because of what he does? No, he's greatly loved because of who God is. Right? Mm -hmm. He's greatly loved because of who God is. Now, again, this terminology is not foreign to the Christian. It shouldn't be foreign to you, man of God. Our Father in heaven, right? I talked about this two weeks ago when I preached at the church. What kind of love is this that he may call us children of God? It is a kind of love, right? Scripture says that God showed us this kind of love. That we are not just called creation, we are not just called people on this earth, but we are called children of God. What kind of love is this? For God showed his great love to us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What kind of love is this? I gotta stress this. What kind of love? Like, bro, like I've been loved. I've been, like, people have told me they love me. But the love that God has showed me, the, God, the love that God has bestowed upon my life, let me tell you something, that love sometimes comes with a rod. Amen. With the rod of correction, with the rod of discipline. That love comes with the love of embrace, that when I was in my field, God came to me and he said, look, son, you're so lost that I know you're not going to come to me, so I'll come to you. Emmanuel, God with us. What kind of love is this? It is the love of the Father. Amen. That would not now, now check this out. And we'll close with this for the live. People look at the cross and they talk about the cross and they talk about carrying your cross and they talk about the wrath. They talk about the, they talk about everything and all that is right. But do you ever look at the cross and see love? Do you ever look at the blood and see love? Do you ever look at the back of Jesus shred to pieces and see love? Do you ever see the thorns on his head and see love? Do you ever see him accepting mockery, being beat, being abused, being stabbed in the side and see love? You want to see true love? You want to know what kind of love this is that God bestowed upon his people, that God bestowed upon Daniel, that God bestowed upon you? This love is the one that would shed the blood of his only begotten son that you would be saved. Praise God. That is love. Agape. Agape love. Unconditional. 
And you know, you know, you know what atheists say. You, you know what you know what what Muslims say. What Hindus say. What kind of love would do? What kind of God would do that to His Son? What kind? And you know what I say. The God that was thinking about the whole entire world. The same God that said, "I'll go and take their place." That God. See, they only see the wrath of God being poured out on the cross, but they don't see the love of God being poured out to a fallen world that needed that love. Come on. What kind of love? The love of the Father. Amen. The love of the Father. Daniel loved, my brothers. <laughs> Daniel was loved. Now, I said this. I said, Daniel wasn't loved because of who he was. He was loved because of who God is. Now, because of that love, because of that love, that led Daniel to an obedient, radical display of faithfulness. It's the goodness of God that leads the sinner to repentance. Come on. The love of God that makes us want to satisfy our Father's desire for our life. Look, if you think you're going to gain God's love by praying more, by fasting more, by doing this more, that's not how it works, brother. You got to start over. It is because of His love that you should be doing these things. Come on. Because of His love. Yes. My kids don't do what I ask them to do because they're afraid of me. My kids do what I ask them to do because they love their dad, bro. Come on. Because if it was the other way around, that's fear. That's not love. That's convenience. And we got to be extremely, extremely careful with that. We got to be extremely careful with that. Now, that's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful observation out of Daniel chapter 9. Amen. I had to end with, with, with that love, man, because, bro, you know, we, we look for scriptures to say, you know, we, 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 we see scriptures that are a general, general view. For God so loved the world. Right? John 3 16. God so loved the world. Okay, well, I'm part of that world. I'm in that world. Therefore, God must love me. It's more personal than that. It's more personal than that. God loved you. <laughs> God loves you. <laughs> but when he does, Everything that he does is that he may be glorified. Amen. If you are watching this live on Facebook, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for joining us this Thursday night. Uh, me and the brothers are going to log off and we're going to dialogue a little bit more. Um, if you wish to be part of that dialogue after the call or before the call, you're going to have to tune in on Zoom. You're going to have to actually call in and be part of it. Um, the, the Facebook Live is just for the sake of anybody out there that just needs to hear a word from God. Um, but if you want to get a little bit more personal, if you want to get a little, uh, you know, a few things off your chest, you're going to have to dial in on Zoom. If you're watching this live on, oh, if you're watching the rebroadcast on uh, YouTube, thank you for joining. Again, remember, subscribe to the channel. Um, share this with somebody that you feel may need to hear this word. Um, and we thank you. We appreciate you guys. Uh, we will be logging off Facebook. We love you guys. YouTube. We love you guys. Always, 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 always remember you were built for this. God bless.